Hi, my name is Evelyn. I pay $220 in rent and that is how I afford to live like this. Hello and welcome to my apartment. We're doing the audio right this time and let's just get the apartment tour out of the way because I'm leaving this apartment forever in like 20 hours and I haven't started packing yet. I live in a 43 square meter or 430 square feet apartment in Guangzhou, China with my boyfriend. We pay 3,150 RMB, which is around $440 in rent. So like $220 each. Now, before we do the knocking on the door, but it's actually just me holding the camera on the other hand and then putting the camera on the tripod to film myself opening the door from the inside thing. You gotta have like the full immersive experience of entering the apartment. <laughs> To get to my apartment, you first have to get through Underwear Street, which is probably where all your flea market made in China undergarment and belts come from. And then you turn into an alley and there are really vibesy old buildings and cool plants. You walk on a cement stairs and listen to your neighbor wash Chinese soap opera and cough their lungs out. you encounter a ladder to nowhere. We're on the eighth floor, and now we get to do the part where I pretend to invite you in. Oh, hi. Welcome to my apartment again. We both know you've already been here. Okay, so this is where I do my aesthetic making a beverage in the morning shots. I guess it's my home cafe corner, but the coffee machines that used to be here are already packed away and shipped to Germany. Oh, I've also been drinking this uh, mint tea a lot. Actually, one of you guys gave this to me when we met up in Tokyo. It's been my comfort tea for like the past month. Thank you, Jackie. You're the best. Oh, I guess here there's a basket of miscellaneous things. Oh, this is fun. It's like edible dust. I've been wanting to make sugar cookies and lattes with very dust on top, but that has not yet been actualized. Oh, uh, this is my fake Bialetti. I guess it's not really fake, it's just like a mocha pot. And then here I put walnuts in a deli container to remind myself to put some on top of my oatmeal. This counter, I'm actually very proud of. I DIY'd it with a plastic table, like razors. I managed to find ones that exactly match the width of the legs. So satisfying. And then custom made curtains, Velcro around it so that it looks like a bar. Let's ignore the fact that my cat's toilet is underneath it, right across from the litter box, is the oven where the brownies came from. If you guys ever noticed the full bottles of liquor that are ever present in my apartments in Beijing and Guangzhou, it is because Dave owns a bar, well used to own a bar. It's called Nugget. It's closed now very sadly, but as a result, we get the externality of alcoholism at home. You can decide whether that's positive or negative. Anyways, these are the aforementioned uh, brownies. I just put together some random ingredients that I have in my pantry, so it kind of smells like pot brownie. And I'm probably gonna throw this out since it's already two weeks old. Oh, the backlight is really bad. Sorry about that. This is my kitchen. The cabinets used to be blue when we first moved in, but I wallpapered it. And if you look more closely, I've done a pretty bad job, but the velvety texture of the wallpaper is really good. And if you open the cabinets, we have a family of cockroaches that have procreated and prosper during the time that I've lived here, but I didn't want to get pesticide because sometimes they venture out of the kitchen into the bedroom or the living room and uh, I don't want my cat to eat like a poisoned one by mistake. Uh, sometimes they fall down on my hair. You have a crushed one right here. It's, it's been there for a while. I'm like weirdly excited to talk to you about this gas stove because it's really powerful and I lack patience for waiting for things to heat up. But this stovetop is fueled by a big gas tank hidden over here. It's probably a safety hazard. It smells like gas when you open the cabinet. This might weird you out a little bit, but I actually wash my face and brush my teeth at the kitchen sink every morning because this happens to be the largest sink in the apartment. Uh, I gotta throw this out. This is the water purifier that we installed ourselves after moving into the apartment because tap water in China is not drinkable. Oh, and these things, I was so excited to see this in the apartment photos because I thought they were like double ovens. Very few Chinese apartments actually have ovens, but they turned out to be not dishwashers, but like dish sanitizer cabins, I guess. Like 
Every Chinese mom, I just use them as drawers. I don't know why I'm telling you about my bathroom, but anyways, welcome. This is kind of uninspiring, just a toilet and a sink here. Oh, there's a vent fan that I taped over. Because I found out my neighbors like to smoke in the hallway, and because this vent connects directly to the outside. I get secondhand smoke every day and although I'm super scared of cancer, I am more scared of confronting whoever it is smoking outside. Uh, so I just taped over the vent. I can still smell the cigarette, but it's a lot better now. Also worth mentioning, I guess, are these cockroach pads. I bought them like the first week I moved into this apartment because I realized Guangzhou has a really aggressive uh, cockroach problem. Gosh, I really don't want this apartment to be all about cockroaches. <laughs> but it's really bad here. So you just take this over your sewage drain and it prevents cockroaches from crawling up. Like those three guys have been there since the first week and I kind of just kept them there to scare away other cockroaches trying to crawl up. So yeah, this is my view when I go to the bathroom. The living room. You might be wondering, Evelyn, it's a gloomy day. The lighting's already terrible. Why do you have the curtains on? I usually like always keep the curtains closed because there are these bars outside the window that kind of make it look like a prison. And also there's a school right outside. All the kids come out during recess like right now and I just want some privacy. This broken curtain rod has bothered me for nine months. I never got to fix it and now I never will. Pro tip for apartment hunting, stay away from schools. So yeah, other than that small caveat, I like this living room a lot. This used to be where Dave and I eat and watch TV, but this uh, table is also falling apart. Now no one's gonna believe me when I say this, but these scratches are not doo-doo. The landlady used to live here and she had a cat and it's from that cat. Oh, I want to bring your attention to how the color of the coffee table and the rattan rug match perfectly with the color of that vintage TV that I wanted to use for cool like, transitions and visuals for you guys, but that also never happened. This table used to be yellow and I taped over it with wallpaper. And then this rattan rug I bought four years ago when I made over my room at my parents' house in 2020. This corner is where I sit and edit. It's a bit of a mess right now, sorry about that. By the time you see this, the how I edit video would have already come out, but this monitor makes editing so smooth and drag and dropping so easy. I'm very proud of this pegboard that I installed. It just looks really unbalanced when you have these three blocks and then the rest of the wall is empty and white. And I think the pegboard really helps fill up this space and bring everything together. Also, it's great for organization because because my desk was a lot messier than this. This lamp also visually kind of fills up the space in between the screens and the pegboard, but that was just an unintended consequence because I just needed it to edit. I've been really into writing things on little pieces of paper and laminating it. This one, I always just keep on my desk to remind myself of what are my priorities for this year. Otherwise, it's like really easy to get lost doing busy things that don't really matter to me. I really don't know why I'm telling you this, but over here is an Ikea cabinet where I keep doo-doo's food and toys. I'm keeping his bag out over here because he's flying out with me tomorrow, like his first time ever on a plane, and he gets really anxious when he leaves the house. So I just want to put the bag out there so he's used to it. I always forget about this room. We have a spare room here that Dave used as a studio to make music. Now it's pretty much empty and they're just boxes and, and packing material. The landlady left a piano with us, which I was really excited about because like every Asian kid, I had to take piano lessons. I actually like really wanted to take them, but my mom uh, discontinued them for me because she said I wasn't practicing hard enough. So I really wanted to learn how to play uh, Taylor Swift songs on this piano, which uh, also never happened. Okay, first let's move this light and sound blocking curtain out of the way. Okay, that looks a lot better. This corner is where you see me film a lot of the sit down and talk portion of my videos. In the morning, I usually like to sit in this corner and I prop my pillows up like this and I just 
read. But actually, most of the time, I just fall back to sleep. I'm currently reading Kim Ji Yeon, born 1982. I heard about this book from Carrie's vlog. And it's about the enraging sexism in Korea. And I'm reading it now because when I go back to Shenyang next week, there's actually a screening of the film adopted from the book at the Korean consulate, which is really cool. A few things I always keep next to my bed. My pillow mist, hair claw, my eye mask. Oh, and this is another little write out of my morning routine. I find that a lot of times, especially when I travel, I fall out of my routine really easily. And it's just really hard to remember all the self-care things I want to do every morning. So I've been using this little card for about a month and I think by this point I've got it down. This is my routine and I'm actually sticking to it. Oh, by the way, these bed sheets, I've been eyeing them for a while. They just seem really soft and buttery, kind of silky but not too silky for bed sheets, you know what I mean? But they're kind of pricey. So when I was at 10,000 subscribers, I just messaged a friend and asked them if they could set me a PR box and they did. These are honestly like my favorite bed sheets. Oh, and the duvet cover is from Ikea. I've been wanting to kind of make over this cabinet situation. I guess that goes on the list of things that'll never happen in this apartment. <laughs> oh, let me clean this up a little bit. Okay, these are half of my book collection in Guangzhou because Dave put the other half away here uh, while I was traveling to Korea. He is very against clutter. Oh, and if you're wondering what this big block is, is a voltage converter so that I can use my hair dryer that I bought in Chicago. This is my makeup and skincare drawer. I bought a bunch of Korean makeup in Seoul and all the other drawers are just random gadgets. My uh, fashion is just neutral color, I guess. So there's a sliding door here and you can go to the balcony. Uh, sorry, I didn't have time to put away the laundry. A, because I'm so worried about missing the flight right now and B, because it's just been gloomy and rainy and gross for like the past month in Guangzhou and clothes take forever to dry if they dry at all, which is a climate condition that I haven't experienced in my life before. So actually there's just like always laundry out here. Oh, there's an umbrella here on the balcony. I don't know where I heard this superstition, but apparently it's bad luck if you open your umbrella inside the apartment or something. This is a cool band. You should check them out. All romantic days. You might be wondering what is this weird metal wire situation, Evelyn? Because we live on an eighth floor and I've heard a lot of horror stories about cats falling off the balcony and my one's especially clumsy and I don't know how to live without him. And lastly, this is a shower. Let's ignore uh, these things here. The water pressure makes so great, but it's kind of rare to have a bathroom in China where the shower and the toilet are separate. Usually it's a wet bathroom, which basically means whenever you shower, everything gets wet. So I'm actually pretty happy with the setup. Sorry, this apartment is really rushed. It's completely unscripted. I'm probably super anesthetic, but I still wanted to show you guys this apartment because it held the past nine months of my life. You guys are probably confused. Why are you moving? again, Evelyn, where are you moving to? When are you going to Germany? And I know I owe you guys a life update, so I'll try to make one for next week. Anyways, I wanted to say thank you so much uh, for, for being a part of my life, and I will see you soon. Bye!